trudging through the snow and welcome to St. Stephen's. Uh, my name is Lloyd. We have Russ at the back who is helping us with our, is our greeter this morning. Uh, Michael is on Zoom. Who else do we have? Lois. Lois is helping us learn how to sing today. And on the organ, we have Amy. Great. Any questions? No. Okay. So anyway, welcome here to, uh, to St. Stephen's. And as we begin, oh, we've got, thank you. Our opening sentence this morning is, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Duty, beloved brethren. The scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and to confess our manifold sins and wickedness. We do not pretend to cloak them. Get my book. And we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same through his infinite goodness and his mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Please kneel as you wish for prayer or remain seated or standing. And together. Almighty, Almighty and, and most merciful Father, we, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have, have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have, we have offended, offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there, there is no health in us. But thou, but thou O Lord, Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty Father, who of thy great love to men didst give thy dearly beloved Son to die for us, grant that through his cross our sins may be put away and remembered no more against us, and that cleansed by his blood and mindful of his sufferings, we may take up our cross daily and follow him in newness of life until we come to his everlasting kingdom through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And together, our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's, the Lord's name, name be praised. Be praised. Please join us for hymn number 505, Be Thou My Vision.
lesson is written in the seventh chapter of Daniel, beginning at the first verse. In the year, in the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and my visions, and the visions of the, of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose me, to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but only one of the most high shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, and ever. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. We shall sing Psalm 149, and you can sing as we regularly do. <laughs> Hallelujah, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the Please remain seated for our second lesson. The lesson is written in the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning at the 11th verse. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined in according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. 
In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of his promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with, your, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Please stand for our gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 20th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is... That is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But I say to you who are listening, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who asks of you. And if anyone takes away what is yours, do not ask for it again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. 
Praised be to you... thee. Sorry. <laughs> this is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to, to thee, thee, O Christ. Let us say together the Benedictus. And together, blessed, blessed be, the be the Lord God, Lord of, God Israel, of Israel, for, for he hath visited, visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised, raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since, been since the world began, began that, that we should be saved from our enemies, and from, and from the, the hands of all that, that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefather Abraham, that and he would grant this. us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give, give knowledge, knowledge of salvation, salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the, the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it, As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and ever, ever shall, shall be, be, world without, without end. end. Amen. Please be seated. And I would invite the, I will invite the children to come forward and have a little, you can stand or you can sit, whatever makes you comfortable. And where's my stuff? Here it is. Ah. This will be a challenge. Huh? Ooh. Sound effects and everything. How's that? So, oh, you've got your hat on again. Last time I was here, you had that hat on. That's a funny looking hat, isn't it? Okay, 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 okay. Hey, what day is it today? Sunday. Uh, yeah, it's Sunday. I'll give you that. But that's only half a point. You get a full point. It's a special day. All Saints Day. All Saints day. And Perfect. Day. You got like a cheat card or something in your hand? I'm kidding. Okay. Who has a photo album? What does All Saints Day mean? Do we know? Keith? They help us do many things. Okay. Can someone tell me one of, what's one thing that the saints help us do? Can you tell me? Fix our teeth? You have a loose tooth? I don't think the tooth fairies are saints. Anyway, what would you? A coin. Oh, you want money for your tooth? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Who has a photo album at home? We're going to try. I'm going to explain something. Well, you probably know more about it than I do. But anyway. In my photo album, I have pictures. And, you know, we also have this book that all over in the church, and you have one at home, right? The Bible, right? It's a book, right? A photo album is a book, right? And in my photo album, um, I don't have pictures of saints, but I have pictures of very special people who, for me, when I was your age, were kind of like a saint. They helped me grow up, and they helped me learn about Jesus, and they took care of me. And one is my mother. There she is with her picture. She just made that picture. That picture hung in our kitchen. Yeah, for all a very long time. And this is my father, right? That's Christmas Day, 1997, long time ago, right? And they were my saints, in a, in a way. They helped me learn about things like how to build a campfire, pictures and they came from a photo album who's got a photo album at home 
pictures of their grandparents. Kind of, right? Like your calendar is a photo album. Our phones are photo albums now, right? You have a calendar? Calendar. Calendar. Yeah. So the Bible is full of stories about people that we call the saints. Up behind me here, in the window, can someone tell me who that is? No? No? I know. It's a saint. What's the name of our church? Saint Stephen. He's a saint, right? And in the book, in the Bible, we have all kinds of books written by saints, right? Like Paul and Matthew, right? And today we read some reading from who? Who talked to us today? Luke, right? They're all saints. And they teach us about Jesus. So I think today that you're going to talk about this in your Sunday school and do some kind of a craft. Maybe you're going to take some pictures. I don't know. So... I don't know. I deal with things up here, not back there. <laughs> Make sense? That's what they call it, administration. Anyway, here. I have a prayer. In my photo album, my phone. Here we go. Children's prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many and many and wonderful saints that follow Jesus down through the ages. Help us to follow their good examples and to remember what a blessing it is to be in the same family of faith. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's take our crown and go to Sunday school. That's a thing that makes me sound... Okay. Look. I guess I don't need two microphones. I don't even need one microphone. There's two of us listening. Okay. So this, of course, is something that was sent to me by Reverend Nancy, um, and it's uh, her sermon for this Sunday, All Saints, All Saints Day. Euro Heaven. That's a place where the police are British, the cooks are French, the mechanics are German, the lovers are Italian, and it's all organized by the Swiss. Euro hell is where the chefs are British, the mechanics are French, the lovers are Swiss, the police German, and it's all organized by the Italians. A bit of humor on cultural stereotyping. But to ponder heaven is, is appropriate on All Saints Day. With heaven, we imagine clouds and angels, harps and halos, meeting once again our loved ones in some eter ethereal place. But Holy Scripture doesn't describe heaven like this. The book of Revelation shows heaven with believers wearing white robes, praising God and worshiping freely and gladly in spirit and in truth. It's hard to imagine ourselves that way, to be with angels praising God for eternity. And what about those stained glass windows? Do you imagine yourself in them, looking holy with what someone described as a soup plate behind your head? Saints in windows remind me of a story. One day, a man walks through a beautiful church 
and with his four-year-old son, the young boy, the young boy looks at the beautiful stained glass windows and asks, who are all the people in the windows, daddy? Saints, says the father. What are saints, daddy? The father goes silent. The boy continues to look at the windows. All of a sudden he shouts, I know who saints are, daddy. They're people that the light shines through. Saints are people that the light shines through. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, uses the word saint to describe Christian believers. For Paul, sainthood is our goal. It's what we are called to be, but it's not necessarily how we are. We are a work of God in progress. That's why I like the name of a Lutheran church in Denver, Colorado. The House of All Sinners and Saints. It's a church plant started by Pastor Nadia Weber Boltz. She's been called the rock star pastor because she looks like one. Black leather, hair cropped, tattoos up and down her arms, long red painted fingernails, skull rings and bling. She drops F-bombs in her sermons. She often wonders why God called an angry person such as herself to the ministry. Here's a short bio from her website. She writes and speaks about personal failings, recovery, grace, faith, and really whatever the hell else she wants to. She always sits in the corner of the other, with the other weirdos. In the section about Nadia, it has one quote from Nadia. God, please help me not to be an ass bleep. It's about as common as a prayer as I pray in my life. She's no longer the pastor there. Not because she was kicked out, but because God was calling her to something else. Under her leadership, the house of all sinners and saints grew to the point that the church board had made a disclaimer on their website. To those who want to visit us on Sundays, please don't. We need Pastor Nadia to just minister to her people on Sundays. She used to tell newcomers to the church that inevitably she'll disappoint them. But if they stuck around, they would invariably find grace and hope at the house. She grew up in a Christian home, but left the faith as a teenager. She started hanging around drug addicts and biker gangs. One day, sitting with her people, she looked around the room and saw the darkness and brokenness of humanity. She said to herself, someone needs to pastor these people. And she heard a still small voice say, yes, and that someone is you. That day she started on the path towards ordination and sainthood. Here's what this ordained Lutheran says about Easter. God simply keeps reaching down into the dirt of humanity and resurrecting us from the graves that we dig for ourselves through our violence, our lives, our selfishness, our arrogance, and our addictions. And God keeps loving us back to life over and over. I'm sure Nadia at some point in her ministry read today's gospel, Luke's Beatitudes, the blessings and woes, they're different than Matthew's. More provocative, I say. Each of our four Gospels portrays the Lord Jesus differently. Mark sees Jesus as the suffering servant. Matthew sees Jesus as the promised Messiah. John sees Jesus as the Son of God, fully divine. But Luke sees Jesus as the Son of Man, fully human. Luke sees Jesus as deeply compassionate, caring for the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized of that culture, such as Samaritans, Gentiles, and women. 
which makes Luke probably the most challenging gospel for us. Because see, we live in a culture of affluence. And we're not poor or oppressed or marginalized. Luke shows us a Jesus who not only doesn't care about wealth, Luke shows us a Jesus who says wealth is a hindrance to God's kingdom. And there's no one more, there's one more way Luke is more challenging to us because he sees Jesus' compassion not in his divinity, but in his humanity. Luke is implying that to be fully human is to identify with the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized. Don't tell me that's not challenging. But if we can slowly and inwardly digest Luke's Beatitudes and agree in our hearts with Jesus who says poverty, hunger, grief, and persecution are marks of the blessed, and wealth, plenty, happiness, and being thought well of as marks of those who are not pleasing to God, and we wrestle with Jesus' teachings with faith, then we're on our way to sainthood. Saints are just ordinary people touched by God's extraordinary grace. We don't become saints by doing good. We become saints by God's handiwork in our lives. We become saints by letting two things work in our lives. First, we let the Holy Spirit work in us. We have to say yes to the Holy Spirit when it comes to the poor. We have to welcome the Holy Spirit into our midst as we walk by a homeless or addicted person. We have to yield to the Holy Spirit's work in us when it comes to the marginalized. When Jesus is the boss in, of your life, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. When we let the Spirit's indwelling light be released in us, we become stained glass windows. So others can see God's light through us. The second way we become saints is the cross. In other words, we become saints through suffering, through choosing to die to self. With faith in Christ, God uses our suffering to make us saints. Jesus' death on the cross saves us from eternal suffering, but it doesn't save us from earthly temptations, trials, and tribulations. When we say no to temptation, our flesh suffers. And in that suffering, the cross works sainthood into our lives. When we control our tongue and stop gossiping, God is making us into saints. When we choose to think well of those who hurt, annoy, or irritate us, God is making us saints. When we control our tempers and appetites, God is making us saints. When we are kind, even when we don't feel like it, God is making us saints. When we turn the other cheek, God is making us saints. When all we want to do is lash out, God is making us saints. Sainthood is not our choice. It's God's choice. Sainthood isn't something we earn through good deeds. It's earned through our suffering for truth, justice, mercy, and love. We don't ask whether we are good enough to be saints. We should be asking whether we are open to God enough. Sorry. To let him make us saints. I end with two quotes that I think sum up the path to sainthood. The first quote is by Mother Teresa. She said, we cannot all do great things, but we can do small things with great love. There are no major miracles or feats of huge daring for the faith. God is a God of small things. God will not call everybody to martyrdom. 
God will call us to stand up for our faith, to witness to Christ when asked at work, in the playground, or in the pub. God will not ask everyone to travel to far off lands to preach the gospel. But God will ask us to love our enemy. God will not ask everyone to take up the vows of poverty. But God will ask us to examine how we spend our money and our time. God will not ask, ask you to save your parish. But God will ask you to do some saintly ministry in this church or in this community. So God can save others through the light and love you release. The problem with Christianity is not that it has been tried and found wanting, but it, that, has, that it has been found difficult and left untried. Our faith isn't an easy one. If it was, everyone would believe and be saved. Following Jesus is tough. Dying to self isn't easy. But our faith is a gift given to us by divine love. And everything we attempt in Christ is aided by one important truth. That the prayers and fellowship of all those known and unknown saints surround us in love. In this company of heaven, we do not walk in the spirit alone. We know that the saints are interceding for us. I like to believe there are heavenly cheerleaders. We never do God's work on our own. We carry with us what the letter to the Hebrews calls the cloud of witnesses, the saints in glory. And someday we will share that glory and be given to the divine and be given the divine task of interceding for and fellowshipping with those who come after us in this world until Jesus' return. Amen. Please stand uh, together as we recite or our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the, from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with thy you. spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Trespasses. 
O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And, and grant, grant us thy salvation. salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And, and mercifully hear us when, when we call upon thee. thee. Let's try that again. O oh Lord, save the king. king yes, <laughs> yes. And, mercifully and mercifully hear us, us when, when we call, call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And, and make, make thy, thy chosen people, people joyful. O oh Lord, save thy people. And, and bless, bless thine inheritance. inheritance. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord. And evermore, and evermore mightily, mightily defend us. us. O oh God, may clean our hearts within us. And take, take not, not thy, thy Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit from, from us. us. Eternal God, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God, who are the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn this morning is uh, hymn number 278 all things come to thee O Lord nope. well <laughs> Jerusalem the golden that's right <laughs> ah
Please be seated uh, or kneel uh, for the prayers. Lord, from whom all good things come, thank you for this day and for everything in it. Give us grace, O Lord, to live to your glory. Give us respect for each other and for all your creation. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto the divine majesty. Beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all that they do confess thy holy name, may gr agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace, and grant unto thy servant Charles, our king, and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially administer justice, to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. We pray, Lord, for our Governor General in Canada, Mary, our Prime Minister Justin, our Premier Scott, Jeremy, our Member of Parliament, and Everett, our Member of the Legislature. We pray, Lord, for our members of City Council here in Swift Current and our Mayor Al. And indeed, Lord, we pray for all government leaders. O well, Lord, in your mercy, hear our, prayer. hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Helen, our bishop, that they, might, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Pray, Lord, for synod delegates and all those attending the 84th Diocesan Synod at St. Paul's Cathedral. We pray, Lord, for the Right Reverend Lynn McNaughton and for the bishop and the clergy and the people of the Diocese of the Kootenays. We pray, Lord, for the congregations of Vancouver Island and for the British Columbia Synod. We pray, Lord, for our companion diocese of Litchfield and Mayinga. And here in Swift Current for our Swift Current and Area Ministerial Association. For our partnership with the Lutheran, Anglican, Ukrainian Catholic, and Roman Catholic Covenant. May we in your whole church be seen as good stewards of your creation, using its resources to the benefits of others and to your glory. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here, present, that St. Stephen's, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We pray, Lord, for our interim rector, Nancy, for the venerable Chris and the Reverend Krista Dowdswell and their family. We pray, Lord, for those in our congregation who work at ministries, 
for our lay readers and Sunday school teachers and those who take care of our parish, those who use their talents in music, and indeed for all those in our parish who help in your worship. Oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we most humbly beseech thee in thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, and sickness, or any other adversity, especially for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray, Lord, for, for Glenn and Peter, for Verona and Agatha, for Ashton and Ryan and Les, Lord, we pray for, for Wyatt and for Val, Nicole and Chad. And Lord, we pray for those known only to ourselves. We indeed, Lord, remember before thee all thy servants departed this, this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and in death have glorified thee beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us say together our general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we thy, we thy unworthy, unworthy servants do give thee most, most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us, to us and, and to all men. men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above, but above all, all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. For the, for the means of grace and for, and for the hope of, of glory. glory. And, and we beseech thee, give us, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three of us are gathered together into thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Announcements. I had a piece of paper, but in the blizzard, it just weird it. Lloyd, do you mind if I come up and do the announcements? <laughs> no, I don't mind at all. <laughs> Please, come up. I'll turn my machine off. So yes, I'll bring the trusty computer up here. And uh, for, some, for, for, for some announcements, from our TGIF, and uh, if you got the TGIF, you would have seen some of the new announcements coming up, and uh, their announcements related to both our rector search and also uh, to the fact that our rector is leaving us here. And so on 
Sunday, November the 20th, we will be having a uh, farewell service for uh, Chris and Krista and family, of course, and we will be very sad to see them go. And, uh, but on the other hand, we also celebrate what a wonderful time they have, we've had together with them here, how much they've done for our parish, how much joy we, we've had together and uh, difficult processes of going through a pandemic. They helped us through that and we're very thankful for that. So we wanna celebrate that and also uh, wish them all the best as they move on to their next calling. Um, so that's November the 20th and that'll be at the, the 1030 service in particular. And also um, Bishop Helen will be there, will be here as well. She says she has to leave at 1230. So she'll be here till 1230. She won't be able to stay very long for the reception afterwards, but yes, we'll also have a reception afterwards that you are all invited to. Uh, on the announcement for the rector search, uh, our search committee met this week with Bishop Helen, and it was a very good meeting. Uh, the people on the search committee, there's six of us. Uh, the canons are very specific about who goes on to that committee. So it's, uh, but, uh, but on the other hand, despite the, the fact that there's a committee dealing with that, the committee also really wants and needs uh, um, help and uh, needs, needs to hear from other people. And so to, to help with this, uh, we have put together a survey in particular. You're also welcome to talk to any one of us to talk with the, the wardens are on the committee. So Lois, you can talk with Lois, talk with myself, Ann Hill, um, and Alex, Alex McPhee are on the committee. They're the synod delegates. And then we elected two people that are AGM. That's Gloria and Cheryl James. So you can talk to any one of us about ideas that you have and that you want us to be sure to take into account as we go into the search. Now, uh, but we've also done, put together a little survey that you can find online. And I believe the link works through the TJIF. So it should be working and uh, I've tried it. And uh, so uh, you can do that. And we will also have paper copies at the church, although uh, actually they're not quite even ready here at the church today, but luckily not too many of you are here in the church and you, you'll have to, <laughs> to find them online. Uh, you can also email me if you want an email copy and I can send you a copy that way. And if you want to print it out and write it, write in it that way, any way you want to do it, so that you can get it into our hands is good. You can email them, you can bring them in person, you can send them by mail or just simply do the online um, copy. So uh, I think the rest of the announcements are pretty much the same as other weeks. And uh, so I will leave it at that unless someone else has some announcements. Good, thank you. Oh, and maybe I should say thank you so much to everybody here and online who was so patient with us today. Uh, because of the weather, uh, we weren't able to have everyone here that we normally were going to have. And so the preparations took a little bit longer. Um, Jeremy wasn't able to make it out for, for Zoom. And so we uh, had to kind of cobble things together in the meantime. And so that, that is what, what happened there. And um, we just thank you for your patience and thank God that God is in control. So everything Michael said by way of thank you for coming um, wasn't exactly what I was going to say, but I was close to it. Yes, I'd like to thank you all for, for coming, and especially those of us who come from someplace from a distance, because you know it speaks to me about your commitment. Lloyd, your mic isn't on. So in a synopsis, I said, thank you for coming. <laughs> and yeah, and, and thanks to those who did come in from out of town because, you know. And Michael. And Michael, yeah, so. All right. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Please join us in our recessional hymn, hymn number 281.
Who are the There's no cost today, right? I didn't get time to make No, no, I just, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Okay, but I didn't want to, anyway, our recessional ham. Who are these like stars appearing? Thanks be to God. <laughs> 